Hello, and welcome back. We're making more tic-tac-toe stuff. So today we're gonna be doing, actually putting out the X's and the O's onto our board. We're gonna be creating a new script, just making a few adjustments and making some edits to the scripts we made previously, which isn't a whole lot once I think about it. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna be renaming our grid script. So, and to do that, we wanna select our script just like this, we already actually already have it selected. I'm gonna hit F2 and I'm gonna rename the grid to the board. I'm gonna hit enter. And then once we open that script up in Visual Studio, we're gonna to wanna to reload it and then go right here and then rename it here. And sometimes it doesn't wanna save after I hit Control S and if I just exit out of it, it'll ask me to save and there we go. So now let's go back into Unity. And we're gonna be making a new script that is gonna be pretty much the main script that's going to be connecting everything, so to speak. So we're gonna right click on our scripts holder. We're gonna to go to create. We're gonna to go to C sharp script. And we're just gonna call this main. And then we're gonna open that up as well. So the first thing we're gonna do is reformat this and get it to where we need it to be. So I'm gonna bring that bracket down using that shortcut that I showed you in the previous video. We're gonna get rid of these two functions and we're gonna make an awake function. And I'll explain a little bit more about that once I type it out. Now, awake is very similar to the start function, but in this case, it runs before the start function. So it's a great thing for having sort of a two-stage initialization. And I usually use this for creating objects as well as getting components. But before we add any actual code in there, let's make some variables. So we're gonna be making three variables. We're gonna have a public board. And remember, we rename this from our grid. And I'm gonna call it M board. So that's gonna be what was the grid in the last video, but we've changed it to be the board. And that's just to avoid some of the naming stuff that is built into Unity. And then we're gonna make a couple of private variables. We're gonna make a Boolean and an integer. And once I type that out, I'll explain a little bit about it. So it's gonna be a private bool mx turn equals true. And so this is a new data type that we've, if you are new to programming, you may just be experiencing for the first time. And a Boolean value is just something that is true or it's false. It's, so it's one or the other, there's no in between. So it's very good for things that are conditionals. And we'll be using it in just a little bit so you can get a bit of experience with it. So we're gonna make another private variable under it. Go private int m turn count equals zero. And int is just short for integer and it's just a whole number. And for this is gonna keep track of how many turns that have been taken within our game. So we need to know when the entire board has been filled up. Once we've hit nine turn count, we know that the game is over and there hasn't been a winner, so it's a draw at that point. So we're gonna go ahead and save that. Have that little bug again where it doesn't wanna save. Just gonna save that. And we're gonna go ahead and reopen it, but we're also going to open up our board. So let's open up that. Let's alt tab back and let's open up our main as well. So now let's go to our board script, where we're going to be getting rid of this start statement. We're gonna be eliminating that. And then within our build function, we're going to be able to pass something into it. And this is what these parentheses are for. And this is what is called an argument. So we're gonna be passing in a reference to a main script or a script called main or the class main, which is what we just created. And you'll kind of see a little bit why we're doing this in just a second. So we're typing main, which is gonna be the type, and then main again, which is gonna be the name of it. So we're gonna go ahead and save that, go back into main, and then within this awake function, we're gonna be calling the build function for our board. So we're gonna do mboard.build, and we're gonna be using the keyword this, and this refers to this instance of this script. So this entire script that we're looking at right now, we're gonna be passing a reference of it to our board when we're building it. So now let's go to our cell script where we're gonna be adding a few, a function as well as a few variables. Well, we may be adding a function, we'll see. All right, so let's go ahead and let's reformat this and let's delete all of this. 
and we're gonna make, yes, so we're gonna make three public variables. We're gonna, actually also, we're gonna get to use our namespaces in this script. So we're gonna write using Unity Engine dot UI, semicolon. And as you can tell, we're not using it yet, and that's why it's grayed out. So let's go down here, and we're gonna make three public variables. And as you can tell, we're using a, a text object, and that's gonna be using this Unity Engine UI, and if you notice, as soon as we created that variable, it went from gray to white. And this is gonna hold a reference to that text that's gonna be, that was childed to the cell. And this is what we're gonna be using to display an X or an O. And then after that, we're gonna make something similar, but it's gonna be a reference to a button. But before I explain that button, I just remembered, for this label, sometimes you may see people just write text. So instead of M label, you may see text just like that. But sometimes I like to just do label because, well, you'll see just a second once we get down into the function. But the main reason why we're editing this particular script in this video is because we're gonna be using that main script that we just created. So we're also gonna make a public reference to a main script. Okay. And now we're gonna make a new public function. It's gonna be public void fill parentheses curly braces and we're going to be using our first we're going to be using our, our variable our button variable and we write m button dot interactable equals false all right so this function is called when the button is going to be pressed so when this button is pressed we want to do a few things to it and one of those things is that we want to make sure it can no longer be interacted with if a player places an x or an o in it the other player after them should not be able to place another X or O within that place. And then right below here, we're gonna to wanna to set the child a text. But first, we're gonna to need to write a function within our main. So we're gonna hold off on just a second, and we're gonna write a comment here, and we're gonna write set childed text. And then we're gonna write another comment that's gonna be switch turns. And we're gonna come back to this in just a second. So we're gonna go ahead and go back to our main script. And within our main script, we're gonna create a couple of functions here as well. So the first thing, one that we're gonna make is we're gonna call it switch. So it's gonna be public void switch. And then the second one that we're gonna make is gonna be public string get turn character. All right, so these two functions are gonna have two different sort of responsibilities. The switch one is gonna be for switching players, so knowing if it's an X or if it's an O, and we're also gonna be building a lot of functionality into this, this function where when we switch turns, we also wanna check if there's a winner. And if you notice, we've been writing the word void a lot. And when that means in a context of a function is if it returns anything. And that's what the word after this, this accessibility word means. So in this case, we're returning nothing, but in this case for the get turn character function, we're returning a string. And if you notice, we have this red line and it's kind of yelling at us because we're not returning a string. So it's letting us know, hey, you want me to return something, but you're giving me nothing to return. A string for, I don't think we've actually written any strings so far. So a string is just a series of characters. And let's see if we just write the word return, put some, uh, quotations, and we can write anything we want here. We'll write pancakes, and we'll end our statement, and there you go. So it's no longer yelling at us. You don't have to write pancakes for the time being. Don't worry about it. We'll get to it in just a second. But the first thing that we're going to do in our switch statement, though, each time a player goes and, the, and we switch turns, we're going to want to add to our turn count. So we're going to write in turn count plus plus. And this is just shorthand for adding one, like we did in our for loops previously, well, in that one for loop. And then how we're gonna be keeping track of whose turn it is, we're gonna, we're gonna use that Boolean that we created earlier. So like I said, a Boolean can only be true and false. So each turn, if X turn is true, then it's X's turn. But if it's false, then it's O's turn. And that's just a very simple way with just one value knowing whose turn it is. And so right here, this is where we're gonna be flipping that Boolean from true to false or false to true. So if we write M X turn, equals exclamation mark m x turn 
And what the exclamation mark does is that it just flips the Boolean, like I said, from false to true or true to false. All right, and that's all I think we're gonna need for the switch function. Now let's go right down to get turn character. So let's move down here. All right, and then the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna get rid of this return pancakes line, unfortunately. And we're gonna be writing an if statement where if mx turn. So what this is, is we're testing to see if this Boolean is true. And there's a lot of different ways you can write an if statement where we write the word if and within these parentheses if the statement is true we're going to be writing or executing the code within these curly braces and this is a shorthand way of writing this because we are using a boolean you could also write equals equals true and it works the exact same way so we're just testing to see if our boolean variable is true but in this case we don't have to do that we can just write the boolean by itself and if it's true it's going to execute this code else let's put some more curly braces in here we're going to execute the code within these curly braces so if it's true we're going to execute whatever's here and if it's false we're going to execute whatever is here so naturally if it's x's turn then we're going to want to return an x so we're going to write the word return we're going to give it our quotes or and we're going to write the letter x and then we're going to write it, put a semicolon there. And then very similarly, right down here, we're going to just replace the X with an O. So to sort of reiterate, if our Boolean that tests to see if it's X's turn, if it's true, we return X, else we're returning an O. Okay, so I think that's it for the main script. Now let's just go ahead and head back to our cell script. I actually forgot something in the, in the board script. So let's go back there really quick. And now that we have both within our main, we have a, we're using this board dot build call and we're passing a reference to this main script into it. We did that because we want to be able to set this value for the main script. And if we go into our board here, within this, within our for loop, if we, if we write m cells brackets, I equals, well actually, dot M main equals main. And to sort of reiterate this entire string essentially, we're starting here in our main script. We're calling the board function where we're passing in a reference to this. Within our board, it's going to be right there. And then we're going to get the cell that we just created and we're going to pass a reference to it. And we do this so each of our cells that we're going to be creating has a reference to the functionality that's going to be within our main script for switching players and things like that. And we're going to be calling that within our cell script. So if we go right back there, we're going to be making the calls right here. Well, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to get rid of these comments. So just delete those. And we're going to write m label.text equals m main dot get turn character. All right. So what does this do? So if you remember why I named this label is we have to get the text property of our text object. And if we write m text dot text, I feel it's a little redundant. So that's why I call it label. And we're going to be setting the text or the, the string here for our text object with our get turn character based on our Boolean within our main script. So when we press the cell button, we're going to be able to get an X or an O from our main script and set it to our label. All right. And once we've set that, we're going to want to switch turns. So you write M main dot switch. Okay. And I did all of this within the cell script because we kind of want an easy way of saying, you know, when we press this button, what happens? So I wanted a lot of the functionality to be right here, just so it's easy for us to sort of look at exactly what's happening. So now that that's out of the way, let's go ahead and hop back into Unity. And hopefully we got all the scripting right, so this should work the first time, unlike last time. So here we are. And we're gonna go to our prefabs again. Well, that was just clear all that nonsense out. It just kind of bothers me. And let's go to our cell. And since we have all of those cool little public functions, or well, not functions, but public variables, we have to set them now. So if we hit this little drop down arrow, we're gonna get our child of text here. And we can just click and drag that into our label. 
And for our button, we're gonna need a reference to that as well. And we could easily write a get component for this, but for now, this works too. So we're just gonna click and drag that to get a reference to this button component as well. And we also have a few things here that I didn't change last time, but we'll change right now. Usually I take the navigation and I put that to none. And then for the text, we want to disable it as a Raycast target. And what this will usually do is if we don't disable this, it'll be able to block mouse clicks for the button. So if we don't need it to be clickable, we just get rid of it. So let's go back here. And now we just have to set what happens when this button is clicked. So if we go down here, we have this on click event. We hit the plus sign. And then we're just gonna drag a reference to itself into there. So now we have a reference to this object basically. We're gonna hit this little drop down. We're gonna go to our cell script and this is gonna have all the functions within this script. And if you remember earlier, we created a function called fill. So if we click that, hit save. And then all we need to do is add our main script to our scene. So we're just gonna come over here to our hierarchy, right click, go to create empty, hit F2, and we're gonna write PR underscore main. And then we're gonna drag our script onto that object. And I'm also just gonna reset the transform, which is gonna set everything to zero. But if you remember, our main script is gonna need a reference to our board. So if we go over to our canvas and hit the down arrow, we're gonna rename our grid actually, now that we've changed the name of that script to board. And we're gonna make a new prefab for that. Well, actually, if we hit apply, let's try it this way. I believe if we rename this to board, it should, well, it should have, it should have said it over there, but don't worry, we're good now, I think. Let's just make sure if we hit apply, nothing weird happens. Okay. And we're gonna need a reference to our board. So we're just gonna click and we're gonna drag over and we're gonna throw it in right there. And then we're gonna make a prefab out of that. Dun -dun -dun -dun. Okay. So I think we're almost ready to go. One other thing that we may need to do on this little cell guy is it make the font a bit bigger. So let's just make this, just make it a hundred for right now. I'm not sure what we need yet. And then we're gonna go to this image and we're gonna make it transparent. Because if you remember when we made our, our little buttons in the last video, they, over, they overlaid these lines, so we don't want that. So we can just take this A, which is gonna be the alpha of our color, and we're gonna bring it all the way down. So we can still interact with our buttons, but they're not gonna necessarily be vis visible. Okay, so let's hit Control S to save, and I think we should be ready to go. Let's hit play. Apparently we're missing something. I'm not sure what we're missing though. I don't know what that is. Let's go ahead and get rid of it though. <laughs> let's clear that and let's try that again. Okay. So if we click, ooh, there's an X, we have an O, and there you go. Yay! That works, cool. And if you notice, we can't re-click on these guys. And if we wanna check, we can go over here to our board where if you remember in the last video, we childed all these cells to it so we can keep it all nice and organized. But if we click on these, we can check that our buttons are not interactable because we've selected all of them. Cool. All right, and I think that's enough for this video. Thank you for watching. If you need any help or would like to leave a comment or a like or anything like that, just go ahead and do it and I will get back to you. So hopefully I'll see you in the next one.